Welcome, brothers, to yet another show, early morning show here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson main channel. I appreciate you, brothers, for being in here now. I know uh, it is a little early, especially for some of y'all on the West Coast. Y'all are asleep. Uh, but for those in the East Coast that are up right now, we have a wonderful show for you right now. And I have a special guest and uh, blogger and uh, owner of www.theesquire.com. I hope I'm saying that right. And that is uh, a subscriber and a brother, Wayman Brown. And the topic that we are discussing today, he picked it, is designing the unstoppable black man. And boy, is that a legendary topic in itself. What's going on, brother Wayman? What's going on, O'Shea? I appreciate you for having me on, bro. And uh, shout out to everybody that's up early with us this morning. All right. And you guys, as you're coming in, make sure that you go ahead and like the video and get some coffee because we have some good information today. Uh, let me just ask you a little bit about, about yourself before we kind of get into this particular topic. Uh, let, let us know, let the brothers know, you know, you know, where you're from, what do you, you know, what, what what's your inspiration? What do you do? Things like that. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, 34. I'm from Buffalo, New York. So I've been uh, living here my entire life, born and raised. And uh, a few years ago, I actually decided to focus on marketing for the solo entrepreneur that was basically trying to emerge into entrepreneurship. So in other words, the person that's kind of on the job, they're doing their thing, but they know that they have some sort of a talent or ability or strength that they want to monetize and uh, they're working independently. And I decided to focus a lot of my efforts in that way because I was uh, basically uh, doing the same thing. So I figured it would be great to help people as I'm on the come up as well. And uh, then I'm also really big into personal development. So that's how I essentially launched my blog, the EsquireProject.com, and uh, had it up for for a few years now, you know, kind of went through some different changes in the direction that I wanted to go with it. But recently, uh, within the past couple of months, actually, uh, largely influenced by brothers like yourself, as well as others in the manosphere, I decided to focus my attention and my content more on helping black men to be unstoppable in the marketplace and also to eliminate barriers to their own personal achievement. OK, OK. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what barriers do you see that black men have in, in the marketplace here in the, in, in the United States? Oh, uh, for one, you know, I think that we're definitely kind of uh, we have a reputation as almost being the last uh, hired, the first fired. Uh, you know, when you think about the volatility, the volatility of the marketplace in general, it's getting pretty tough because we're entering what's known as the gig economy. So it's been predicted that within the next couple of years alone, uh, reports have said anywhere from a third to maybe 40 percent of people are going to be working on a short term contractual basis. So I think for black men is really important because we're oftentimes sought out as the least desired within uh, the workplace. You know, I still have a day job um, and I've had a number of different jobs over the years, uh, several different industries. And. Just from my own experience, I know that we're oftentimes not really desired in the workplace that often. So I think that uh, for black men, when it comes to our image, our uh, our attitudes, our work ethic, you know, just the conception of, of how we're perceived, that's in and of it, that in and of itself is a really big challenge for us. So those are some areas that I think brothers could really use and work on. Let me ask you this. Why do you think that um, there's a lot of theories out there about maybe why black men are not welcome in the workplace or things like that. What's your uh, in interpretation of why you think that a black men are not really welcome in a lot of workplaces? Well, you know, we have uh, somewhat of a reputation for being a bit abrasive. You know, we can be someone or we can be guys who uh, may kind of challenge authority, so to speak, or we at least have that reputation. And, you know, just as men in general, it, it can be kind of tough to, submit to authority and uh because we're naturally just kind of like our own islands we kind of do our own thing but i think with black men we have garnered that reputation a little bit more so so i think those are just a couple of factors that can kind of go into why we kind of have that uh that rep for being kind of tough to deal with at the workplace mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let, let me let me ask you um since we're trying to design the unstoppable black man, what are some other things and weaknesses that you see uh, in African-American men? Because in order for you to design this unstoppable person, uh, there has to be some flaws that must be perfected. Um, just by column, kind of tell me some things. When you look at black men, men in America, what are some of the flaws that you're seeing in the brothers 
uh, that really stick out as a sore thumb? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, right off the bat, I can kind of think of uh, three real key areas overall that kind of cover a number of different areas. And uh, for one, I would say definitely black men when it comes to our self-esteem, uh, our confidence and also our competence. Those are kind of uh, the three major things that I think kind of go into or at least influence other areas like your finances, uh, physical fitness, our relationships with women, our ability to network or lack thereof. But our self-esteem, our confidence and our competence are really three things that always kind of stick out to me. Let's start with the number one. We're going to get into other things here, guys. And thank you. Wake the hell up. Good morning, O'Shea and guests. Uh, shout out, Miles. What's up? Let, let, let's like the videos, guys, that you're coming in. Uh, but let's talk about the self-esteem. Um, why do you feel that black men uh, suffer so much from such a low self-esteem? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, of course, we know that our self-esteem is essentially how we feel about ourselves. It's our own sense of worthiness. It's our value. It's basically our image of ourselves. And black men, I believe we struggle with this since in a lot of areas, we're kind of last on our own totem poles and everyone else's. We've already we've always been trained to kind of put other people ahead of ourselves. Uh, when I wrote my article, uh, why black men must stop seeking the approval of women, basically, I kind of illustrated with my own self how even with me, you know, I was pretty much trained as a lot of us were to put women's needs ahead of my own, even if it was to my own detriment sometimes. And the article kind of details that. And I think that's something that a lot of black men throughout this country have experienced. And we just kind of have an overall inferior self image that's handicapped our progress in a lot of ways because we don't think that we really deserve better. Uh, we're not really rewarded. We don't really operate on a quid pro quo system in exchange for an exchange system when it comes to a lot of things. So, uh, I think that when it comes to our jobs, a lot of times brothers will take jobs that do just enough to pay. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily thinking of being reciprocated appropriately in relationships, especially romantically. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like we kind of have uh, one of our wrists handcuffed to a bar and the other one is free when it comes to our self-esteem. And uh, we're just we're just kind of looked at as being expendable. Um, the way that we're depicted in the mass media, the way that we're treated by law enforcement, all of these different things go into our, our negative self-image of ourselves. These are factors that work against us. So I really think that it's important to have some sort of a medicine, uh, so to speak, to kind of heal the wounds in order for us to start organizing ourselves as a group, but starting off individually uh, in order to make some progress in that area. Let me let me ask you this as far as you, you're making some really, really, really strong points. Um, how do black men, we, we know how they see themselves. Mm -hmm. How do they see other black men in your opinion? That's a really good question. O'Shea. Um, you know, I, well, I'll give you an example where I live at. I live in Buffalo, New York. Uh, sometimes we're, we're on a list. I don't remember exactly who produces this list, but between Buffalo, Cleveland, Detroit, uh, we're, basically kind of like always in the top three most impoverished cities, you know, very low uh, income per capita, very high poverty rate. But then you also have some people who are living middle class. You have some people who are living upper middle class, et cetera, even within a black community, like, you know, most places throughout this country. But um, I think that as black men, we are so we operate so independently. And a lot of times we kind of have a certain attitude towards each other where we don't really need to deal with each other or where we always have to try to compete with each other or be the, the dominant one in the room. And, uh, I, you know, I don't want to make it seem like it's like this overall, just in general with all black men, mm -hmm. but that's, that's kind of like the general consensus, you know, basically if, if we don't really, we don't really operate from a place of interdependence with each other, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's basically about, outshining the next person a lot of times it's about uh being able to have a, a bigger or better or better reputation than the next black man a lot of times so i think that overall brothers kind of have a, a very standoffish sort of a temperament when dealing with each other but at the same time i've also seen very good examples of brothers uh who can work together usually it's done in really small groups you know um but but i would say it's a mix between those two as far as the way that black men view each other 
L- let's talk about these small groups because um, I agree 100 percent what you're talking about. You Because we want to give some precedence to uh, some of the brothers that you may know personally or on your own life or in your community uh, that are that are working together, that are doing uh, uh, things that are positive or that are uh, substantial. Can you give any examples of, of, of these things that you do see within black men that you know of in these small mm. groups? Right. Well, uh, even locally for me, you know, I'm a, a person who generally speaking is involved with a lot of things in my local community. And uh, when, when, when I think of the small group, it's, it's really small. I mean, I'm talking maybe a handful of brothers who might be working on a certain type of project. So, you know, I've seen brothers come together to form different smaller nonprofit organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a part of a uh, locally here in Buffalo. We actually, one thing I like about living here, it's a very, it's kind of a smaller city, about a quarter million, 260,000 people. The metro area is of course bigger, but they're, there's a lot of access to things if you kind of roll your sleeves up versus if you were living in a city like New York or L.A. where it's kind of hard and it's extremely competitive. Uh, but even when it comes to like local media, I've been able to uh, have support in that way when uh, it comes to education and, and, you know, starting up a TV show and things like that. There's actually an outlet that's local that. Uh, can help people within the community start their own public access channel. So I've seen brothers work together on that type of a scale as well. And uh, also when it comes to basically, you know, putting together different events that could be uh, for for the betterment of our people locally, I've seen that as well. But again, you're talking really small scale. And oftentimes, even if the brothers do come together to do these different things, I oftentimes don't really see it uh, as being very long term. It's all it's almost kind of situational. And uh, ultimately, I think that'll be a really nice step to see black men being able to work together, even if it is in smaller groups, even if it is kind of like with that tribalism effect, but doing so on a regular and a consistent basis. Let me ask you this, because you you make a good point that these smaller groups do not uh, work together long term, but the smaller groups are more on a shorter term basis. So can you explain to me why you feel that these smaller groups typically have a hard time working together on a longer term basis? You know, I think about it like this, man. Um, the, the One of the ways I can illustrate it is like this. When you think of a family of four, you might have a mom, a dad, you know, a daughter and a son in the household. Uh, you know, the parents can be married the whole time. And when the, the kids kind of get older and, and life changes, the family changes. So dad, you know, may have done some things in the house that weren't necessarily correct. Mom may have done some things in the house that weren't necessarily correct. And just within those four people who probably went to the same place of worship, lived in the same house, you know, they understand each other. They can find themselves in a strange relationship, even though they understand each other more than anybody would probably understand them. So when I think about, you know, the black populace at large with 40 something million people, it's even harder to manage, even if you're talking about just dealing in these different groups and uh, and things like that. I just think that over time, relationships change, values change. Uh, you know, like anything, you, you kind of start to see things that you maybe didn't see before within a person, maybe certain things that are out of harmony or at a conflict with where you are. And things like that, I think, are really one of the big reasons that black men seem to kind of work together on a short term situational basis. And we have a lot of pride as men, especially as black men. And we are not very forgiving of, of not only uh, each other, but more importantly, ourselves. So I think that that goes into a lot of play as well. OK, OK. Let me let me kind of get to the, the, this piece about the, the three areas confidence. We'll get into the other things, too. But I just want to hit these things. Uh, self-esteem, confidence and competence. We talked about self-esteem a lot. Tell talk to me about this whole confidence issue that you feel that brothers are lacking here that we need to straighten up. Well, you know, our confidence as a group, uh, it oftentimes comes across as being somewhat exceptional in some areas, such as when it comes to our physical strengths, you know, our, our inborn suave or swagger, if you will, or our abundance of, of different talents and our capabilities. Uh, but when it comes to brothers taking on new tasks or new roles in different areas of life, that kind of force our growth, I think we get a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think that black men, a lot of times we are comfortable kind of being stagnant and doing what we know best. But then when it comes to approaching something from a different angle or even, you know, let's say at a job, I I know a lot of times uh, for myself, even not so much in recent years, but, you know, I kind of had a reputation within myself where other people didn't really know it, but I was almost just kind of like, man, I want to do enough to do what I got to do. I'm not trying to 
trying to necessarily take on leadership roles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't I don't necessarily want supervisory or management type of uh, experience or, or responsibility. I just want to kind of go in there, do what I got to do, work hard, respect my coworkers, get my check and get out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the you know opportunities like that are opportunities for black men to be able to not only be an example uh a leadership example on the job but at the same time to pull other black men in with them so mm -hmm. uh i think that our confidence definitely needs some help in that in that area and um you know th that that to me is probably the second most important thing when it comes to that three piece uh that three piece element that i mentioned let me ask you some shout out to brother uh Tom Jefferson for the five hour donation. I really appreciate you, brother, for that. Guys, let's just do uh we have 63 people watching. I know it's very early in the morning here in the United States or there. Uh go ahead and let's get the likes up on, on the video, brothers. We appreciate you. Some really good content for you, black men, today. Uh let me kind of go back on on on, a, uh, on one of the things you said. Uh when uh number one, brothers, they do miss the opportunity to get into, you know, sometimes the management are the vertically moving careers. Uh, but also what I've noticed, and shout out to Mr. Research, we talk about this all the time. When our brothers do get into positions of you know management or entrepreneurship and a successful business, many times uh, black men tend not to want to hire other black men. They tend to pull in a lot of times uh, black women, uh, now, I have also heard from other, you know, black business people who own uh, certain, you know, businesses that they, they will try to give brothers a chance to to do the job. And those black men will underperform or, um, you know, do things like that. So what, what, what are your other reasons why you think that a lot of black men are not pulling other black men into, uh, you know, other corporations or their jobs and things like that? Well, you know, just, you know, a thing or two that just comes to mind immediately is basically wanting to be that one, wanting to be that one in that position, uh, wanting to be that one at that job. And it's just it goes back to the the competition among ourselves and and, uh, you know, the standoffish sort of a, a temperament that we have towards each other, where it's kind of like I got mine. You know, you got to figure out a way to get yours. Uh -huh. So uh, <laughs> that's definitely yeah. it, you know, especially if you're talking about those those higher up positions where maybe you're talking about these Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, things like that. Uh, but it's, it's really sometimes I think, you know, black men, we don't get a chance to have a lot of wins. And, you know, certain situations like that where now, you know, I'm the manager at this place or I'm a supervisor over here. That kind of gives us something to, uh, to kind of stand on. And and I think a lot of times as a group, we don't want that threatened. So bringing in a woman won't necessarily be a threat to that. You know, you, it'll kind of be like a big up to you in a way because you're, you're now looked at as being the man even more. So you can be admired from a female, but uh, yeah, I think that just overall we've struggled as a group with not looking at each other as necessarily the competition, but looking at each other as, you know, basically a network that needs to help each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me kind of do this. And guys, thank you so much for the participation so much on the show. Uh, let's talk about the, this uh, piece about the competence. Um, what do you really mean when you say that black men need to work on their competence? Can you talk to me about that? Right. So, you know, being competent, of course, usually just kind of centers around basically proficiency, you know, having know-how, having skill, having ability. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're living in an ever-changing world in a constantly changing economy. Uh, even with that report that I that I mentioned about the four out of 10 people who probably are going to be working on a short-term contractual basis with the gig economy just around the corner, mm -hmm. basically uh, it's going to get to a point where you have to be able to show and prove very efficiently that you can help businesses uh, increase their revenues and increase their profits. Mm -hmm. So I think that the black man uh, already experienced a very high level of volatility within the marketplace. So I think it's really important for us to kind of be like a jack of all trades, you know, so to speak. Uh, I, I use the reference of brothers being like a Swiss army knife as a metaphor. I oftentimes look at different objects or different things as references. And when I think about a Swiss army knife, I think about something uh, that's that's always prepared, that's capable to undertake any task. Uh, you know, so I think it's very important for black men to never be unable when it comes to anything, whether it be due to a lack of skills or a knowledge base and what you don't have, go out there and get and continue to keep on adding to your arsenal because we're moving through different shifts 
and we need to be prepared to take care of ourselves and our families. So competence is extremely important, not just when it comes to business or, or uh, work, but also just in general areas of life, because it helps us to be prepared in dealing with situations. Okay. Okay. Now, let, let me, uh, now the economy, economy is changing. Um, I did do a, a show. I don't know if you saw that on my other channel, the trucking show. Did you see that hangout I did? I think was that last night? Uh, it was two nights ago. Two nights ago. Yeah, I think I actually uh, stopped in for that one for a bit. I didn't uh, watch the whole stream, though, but I definitely did stop in for that one. OK, when, when you talk about competence and, and you, you look at the economy that is changing mm -hmm. and you and you have, uh, let's say, a, a 22 year old guy comments um, under your blog post one day and he says, you know, wait a minute, you know, what do you think that, you know, from what your view is on the economy, what should I as a black man uh, be focused on? As far as a career and you get this question, what are you what are you telling brothers uh, 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 as far as that? Well, overall, I think it, it's going to it comes back to kind of taking that jack of all trades approach. I mean, some brothers who might be in a little bit more, you know, of a stable industry, so to speak, or the brothers who might be in professions, the doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, they may not necessarily feel the sting uh, as much or don't believe that they'll necessarily need to feel the sting as much. But to me, it's really being able to in some way, always be able to monetize whatever skills you have, whatever talents you have, whatever knowledge you have. So I think it, it kind of takes a combination of if you aren't able to be a full time entrepreneur, as I'm still uh, not a full time entrepreneur, I'm basically emerging into full time entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that you can still, uh, if, if necessary, to have your job. Uh, to ha and, and preferably, if you can, to have one that's going to help you build up different skill sets and different strengths that you're going to be able to use in different arenas of life. But maybe you are in a job that, you know, maybe pays you twelve fifty an hour or something like that. That's cool uh, if that's what you can do for right now. But don't forget to brush up on other skills. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to try to go out there and get different certifications. Uh, make sure that you uh, have other habits such as saving your money, trying to uh, invest into things that you that you can understand. I know you had Dr. Kenya Meadows on who talked about that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so just kind of like working with what you have and also being able to create some lane for yourself independent of your job, I think is really, really critical. So, you know, whatever that might be, you might be good at something that's kind of small. Maybe you know how to fix computers. Uh, maybe you know how to work on cars. Whatever it is that that is your strength, use your strengths and try to basically uh, spread them out as much as you can so that you have multiple streams of revenue in multiple different areas to be able to uh, increase your income from different opportunities. You know what? I, I feel that um, you answered that question perfectly. We have uh, some somebody, uh, some asshole. Uh, he says he is not answering the question. I mean, again, people sometimes we have bad comprehension uh, in the chat. You know, I, I will use myself as an example. Uh, what you're saying is, what is your skill set right now? What can you do? What are you good at? Mm -hmm. you know, if you're not a medical doctor, if you're not a lawyer, if you're not a military, what are you good at? And let's see what you're good at that we can monetize your skills, what you're good at. And, and you know what's interesting? When I came to Poland, I was in medical school. I have a degree in biology, uh, but I knew how to create content for this particular niche. Uh, I knew how to network for this particular niche, although I wasn't thinking about it initially, but I was able to do it and I did have a passion for it. And now I am, I guess you would call myself a full time Negropreneur. OK, <laughs> uh, and, and so you're actually you're actually uh, uh, time, time, hold on a second. Virgo, Virgo, time that nigga out. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I, I, I we had a good interview, but get this nigga up out of here. Get him out of here. Somebody time his ass out. Come here. Tell me I'll be more specific. Shut your ass up. OK. You're, you're actually right. And, and brothers, I, I have to say that was a good good thing. We, we want to find out for, for African-American men, number one, where's your good skill set at? Uh, do you know how to monetize those skill sets? And if you don't think that you have any skill sets, then, then that's what we're working about, you know, trying to find what can we do to get you into those skill sets, whether that's in the CDL, whether that's in plumbing, whether that's in you know, some type of design, some type of whatever. So that's that's what you're, 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 you're talking about, correct? Right, right. That's exactly it. And I always think it's funny, man, because, you know, I'm always on the streams. And when I see people in the chat, they have me cracking up. So I can't even be mad at, <laughs> mad at what was saying that because it's funny to me. But, I, you know, I can understand if a person thinks maybe that person was trolling. But uh, at the same time, it's kind of like I don't think uh, 
I'm not necessarily trying to point brother into a certain career path that's so direct where it's like you need to be in this field or you need to be in that field. And the reason is because I don't believe that any field is necessarily secure. Uh, basically, there's opportunities in different fields. But what I'm basically telling brothers is like, look, whatever you're into, be into that thing. Do it. Do it very well. Try to constantly upgrade your life. Like you said, even with the CDL uh just basically create more lanes for yourself. That's really what it's about. It's not so much about just being affixed into one particular industry or, you know, this is the hot market right now. But like you said, basically find out what you're good at, use those things, create something where you can earn profits more so than wages and just rock with that. Because basically that's that's the direction that everything is going uh, with automation and, and more uh, things being digitized. So that's what I'm basically encouraging brothers to do. Let me ask you this real quick. Do you think that uh, as far as the um, automation, a lot of brothers are concerned about that. Um, is automation going to be a problem, do you think? I mean, I know for America, but, you know, do you think that black men are going to be you know, really hit hard by that? I think uh, the marketplace in general is going to be hit hard by that, you know, um, even when you look at something as simple as when you go to your stores with the self checkout, uh, I went to Target last night and uh, I bought a couple of, of electronics. And I just remember, I think there was like one person who was an actual live cashier and there were more from what I remember, there were more lanes for the self checkout than there were from, you know, a person that you can actually deal with. Oh, say that again, say it, it again, say it again. Say yeah. It again. Yeah, man, I think uh, what we're going to see is people are going to start getting replaced in general by machinery. Uh, like I went to Target last night. There was a one cashier and it wasn't even really like that late. I think this store closed at midnight. I was probably there around eight o'clock. There's one person who was available, but there were more self checkout from what I recall that were that were actually available than cashiers. So mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing uh, basically people in general kind of get replaced and brothers already being kind of low men on the totem pole. You know, we're, we're definitely going to going to feel the sting of that possibly even more so than any other group. You're definitely right. Let me do this. Shout out to Ann James. Yep, I have a certification automotive technology. Now I'm going to school for mechanical engineering and I had a photography passion I was really good at and I'm an informal scaffold builder at 24. Damn, brother, you're doing a lot in your life. I'm going to start hating <laughs> on you, nigga. You, get, you got too much success going on. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the <laughs> super chat. Yeah, that brother doing a lot, man. So it's good to see our young brothers out there uh, at, at 24 doing, doing really good. Let me, let me talk to you about also um, you mentioned this whole idea of networking. I'm going to go back to the original conversation we had on Facebook to come up with some points. Mm -hmm. uh, brothers have a hard time. I know that I don't have this time, hard, hard uh, problem as, as much as other brothers do. But we do have a problem establishing this network as black men. Um, and it, it is a, it's a bad detriment, not only within our African community, but let's say outside of the community with other blacks, other black immigrant groups. Uh, how has this networking inability um, hurt us uh, as a group? So this is this is so integral because, uh, you know, networking is it, such an underutilized tool. I mean, I can even just think of, of just with me and you, um, you know, I just recently uh, reached out to you to touch bases. It's probably been just over a month or maybe about a month and a half. And uh you know, here it is. I'm actually on the show. Some, you know, it, it's amazing how there's a power that's within networking that brothers just definitely don't really use or that is underutilized. And it really inhibits us from a lot of different opportunities. Basically, one of my philosophies is that you can get more done working with other people cooperatively than you can as an island. And a lot of times black men don't necessarily look at look at things like that. We don't really look at each other as a need. We almost kind of look at each other, you know, at best sometimes as an accessory. But it's so important because there are so many different social opportunities, civic opportunities, employment, job opportunities that are really right within your own city that you live in. A lot of times, if you just reach out and, and get to know, you know, different people that are within your locale or even online, mm -hmm. it's, it's extremely important 
for black men to be able to do that because it kind of keeps us locked out of a lot of different things that if we simply knew the right people, if we simply developed the relationships with the right people and treated our network uh, with fairness and, and make sure that we're actually bringing resources to the table instead of just trying to always get something and looking at it as, you know, you know, basically looking at it as working cooperatively, cooperatively with another person where you both try to achieve win-win situations, there could be really nothing, I don't think, that black men, especially throughout this country, couldn't do if we were able to if we were able to get on one accord with that. And it doesn't even necessarily take everybody doing it. You right. can have, you know, a few hundred brothers, a few thousand brothers throughout the nation that can be doing this. But uh, this is where other groups usually really win and they, they succeed very highly. And this is where we are always going to be kind of locked out of all types of successes that we could be due simply because, you know, we, we choose not to use that tool. A lot of times our pride and our ego gets in the way, but it's really a, a true handicap for black men. Let's talk about this, because as far as the networking is concerned, uh, you made a great point about um, a lot of brothers are always trying not uh, i mean not all of them but we do have it, it happens always trying to get something without bringing anything to the table i mean this is important um as far as black men C can we talk about that real quick because a lot of a lot of niggas just don't get this can we talk about that brother because this is important we, we need to teach these we brothers today a lot of brothers always want to get access to somebody else's network but not bring anything can you elaborate right. on that now i ask on the question yeah, man. Um, you know, it, it just kind of is one of those things where I think networking has become a term where people normally associate it with something that you kind of like, like it's an activity. For example, I'm going to go to this event so I can network. I'm going to go here so I can pass out a bunch of different business cards to different people and basically uh, self promote versus looking at it as here's a, another person who has values, needs and desires. I have values and needs and desires. It's important for me to figure out and discover what this person's values, needs and desires are so that I can invest into those. And I have the faith that if I'm doing the right thing, then it'll be reciprocated. But a lot of times brothers just, you know, just kind of go out there and, and just trying to see what they can get without actually bringing anything to the table. And, you know, you'll, you'll exhaust a lot of uh, potential relationships just by doing that. It's such a turnoff when, when you don't really have anything to bring to the table when you just always got your hand out for something. Um, I'll just use a really quick example, Shay. Uh, I know, you know, uh, recently I had actually been in touch with uh, Black Ram 313 as well as Ron Wills. And I remember, uh, you know, basically I wanted them to take a look at my work. But before asking them to take a look at my work, I made sure that I donated, you know, to them. I, I made sure that uh, I donated something to the PayPal. And it wasn't so much about, hey, I put some money down now can you look at my work it was just more of a respect thing like if i'm asking for your time when right. you don't even know me it should be just one of those things where you know I, I should have the decency and the common decency to say well i don't have a relationship with you so i want to make sure that i'm investing into a relationship with you and i already appreciate your work anyway and brothers i think need to take that sort of an approach of what can i do first before i start thinking about what i'm going to get out of a situation Right. And I mean, like even even you, when you come in, you put in, you know, it's not like a whole lot of money or anything like that. Um, but it was it's a, it's like, you know, you came on. You always I always know. It's always two dollars. Right. But it's right, just right. The fact that, OK, I see the brothers trying to support. And that's the, the thing that a lot of brothers don't understand um, when it comes to us as as YouTubers, like deep in thought. He's also out of Buffalo. He didn't even ask me to come on and do the show. I asked him, would he come on to do it? Uh, because he's a good brother. He's trying to help at risk use in Buffalo. And he he always every show I do, I always send him a, a, a link to the show um, because he he's, he, he, you know, he don't be in here like, you know, going crazy on Super Chat. But it just because, you know, it's like, all right, I'm going to contribute to what you're trying to do. A lot of brothers don't understand that when we run this platform, I spend about eight or nine hundred dollars every month on YouTube donating to other people. And if you've seen me on black YouTube. I'm donating to all kind of people all the time. Simple to pee when he's online. Uh, Paris, if she's online, if I catch it. Uh, 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 Jada Black. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribed to over 30 people on Patreon, you know, and I do that because I support people. So, you know, when you want to come on and get access to somebody's network, you got to understand that this network is not free. You know what I mean? So it's not right. that, you know, brothers are always trying to, 
uh, to charge you or anything like that. Like even when Alpha Male Strategies came onto my channel, you know what I mean? I didn't just have them come on for the free. Uh, I dropped them a little something, let them know I appreciate you. You know what I mean? And this is what br brothers need to understand when you're trying to come into another black man's uh, camp to get your stuff promoted. It don't cost a lot of money. And like, especially when you're dealing with black people, you know what I mean? $2 goes a long way. $5 goes a long way. $10 goes a long way. You know what I mean? And if you're genuine, people will see that we'll want to, people will want to work with you. It's always the brothers that email me all the time. Hey bro, I want to come on to your show. I want to come on to your panel. Now I have like 900 or a thousand people on my primetime shows. And it's like, nigga, why would I, you know, why would I have you come on? I don't even know you. You know what I mean? Right. And, right, and man. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. I was just saying, yeah, you know, my, my thing was, uh, I said, you know, I'm in the chat. I'm always making it rain with the two dollar bills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, I, I said, but but to me, it was kind of like one of those things where it's really just about trying to kind of really show an example of support more than it is necessarily the amount. Because you know, I'll be in there probably four or five times a week doing that. Even though you know, I, I could just simply only have you know Patreon and be a member there, which I am, and I'll be upgrading on your. Uh, patron as well but at the same time i want to be able to show like look here's support it doesn't necessarily take much but here's a couple bucks if you keep on seeing you know the same people putting in two dollars five dollars you know 199 10 20 i know some brothers they be you know dropping a half a stack sometimes so, <laughs> yeah but, like, but, but, but you know, know dropping a million up in that motherfucker that boy he rich yeah right <laughs> but you know it's just it's just setting an example of of look we need to support black male media if you if you value the content it's nothing to take out a debit card and just and just go ahead and take care of that you know yeah. so yeah it's really important man to to show that you're not just there to just take something and that you're actually there to invest in the into a person also let me do this real quick a shout out to eric dorsey appreciate the great content i passed and i played around let me also back on from women brown's point a lot of brothers uh like when when we get the support uh from y'all we're able to get other professionals that want to come in and, and and deal with us like when we, when when you guys donate two or three dollars people are watching right like that's how we got dr kenyon meadows md he wanted to uh, he he emailed me we were able to bring him in we're able to bring in all kind of powerful brothers because a lot of black men have been waiting for us to you know build some type of a network so you know this is why we appreciate you brothers uh for what you guys do even if you can't donate any money we understand that but, you know, sometimes just let somebody know, like, look, man, I don't have any money, uh, but I would like to do this. This is what I can do. You know what I mean? And still, that goes a long way, you know, especially over here. So um, let, let, let's also talk about um, some of the other things that you wanted to, to talk about as far as uh, designing the unstoppable black man, brother. Right. So, um, you know, I think that uh, it's really important for black men to focus on a few major key areas of life and for us to use some some basic you know, kind of fundamental principles that can serve as a guideline to improve the direction that we're heading in. You know, men in general, we usually operate very, very well on systems. We're good at routine uh, and we're cool with kind of doing the same thing over and over again in order to be successful. So, you know, a system, of course, is just a pattern of operations that can give us a predictable result. So I think that brothers kind of need systems for different areas of their life. They don't have to be complex, but when it comes, uh, for example, when it comes to things like personal finance, when it comes to fitness, when it comes to networking, uh, when it comes to, you know, living with a sense of purpose, simply maybe using one or two guidelines, I think, in those different areas could be a big benefit to brothers. And um, you don't really have to have much. You can kind of take the Arthur Ashe approach of start where you are, use what you have, do what you can, um, you know, just kind of work with the things that are already in your favor and, and just go from there. And there are some areas that I can definitely touch on, O'Shea. Yeah, let me do that. Shout out to brother Virgo Life. <laughs> Every time the brother that he came in, gentlemen. Thank you, brother. We you know we just over here, man. We mean over here, brother. We appreciate you guys. Get the likes up. And, and brother Wayman, I don't know if you have a YouTube channel. Do you have a YouTube channel at all? I don't yet, man. I've uh, I've definitely been encouraged to start one, and it's something I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, okay. More, and really, I want to add a, a audio video portion to my content, so I'll definitely be having that in the works too. Okay, okay, no problem. So when we when you get one, we'll definitely do the show. Sister Allie Emmett, my one of my favorite YouTubers, she won't give me a show though, because she she's a superstar. But shout out to Sister Allie. Um, let's talk about the other things that you wanted to weigh in, brother. Okay. So uh, you know, as I mentioned, I, I think it's important to use a strategy, and there's also important to kind of have a bit of a philosophy is, is almost like a base guideline. So, you know, when it comes to different areas, for example, uh, for example, finances, my personal philosophy 
is that I should always be able to take care of myself and have enough moves to be able to capitalize on investment opportunities. That single way of thinking is what enables me to have a certain habit when it comes to simply investing and saving my money. But, you know, at, at the very base of it, a strategy could be, you know what, I don't make a lot for a brother may not make a lot, but he could say, I'm going to save 10 percent of my money. Every single week or every two weeks when I get paid, I'm going to make sure I got 10 percent of my money in a savings account. Uh, this can help me to have a hedge against being broke. It'll give me you know, a lot more confidence financially because I know I have a little bit of a fund or, or a nest that I'm sitting on. I'm not saying brothers have to understand everything about the stock market and real estate and everything's like everything like that. But simply being able to allocate a certain amount of your funds so that you have that for yourself. Is a, is a really big plus. You know, it can take you a long way. Uh, I just got back into the gym recently. I was working out at home, but I do about five basic exercises, probably about twice a week. And I do about 20 minutes of cardio when I do those five basic, basic exercises and that cardio that I do is enough to basically cover probably 80 percent of my physical fitness results. So, uh, you know, even when it comes to things like that, brothers making sure that they're putting their uh putting their best foot forward when it comes to taking care of themselves. And, and when I go work out, my mentality is that my body needs to be prepared for war. That's my philosophy. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's war around the corner, but that type of mode of thinking keeps me in the habit of making sure that I'm doing the necessary things to keep myself in shape. Uh, when it comes to my relationships with other people, like we mentioned with, with networking, one of my philosophies is that I can get more done with the cooperation of other people than I can as an island. So at least every month, maybe every couple of weeks, I'll make sure I'm always keeping in touch with different people, uh, making sure I'm establishing new relationships, making sure that I'm uh, reinforcing other relationships as well, contributing something of value to people's lives, uh, recognizing their attributes more than I do their deficiencies. Those are simple things that, that I think that brothers can do just to kind of start creating a very well-rounded approach to being unstoppable uh, in that there won't really be any barrier that they can't get over that they can encounter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, let Let's talk about. Uh, so we talked about the the the, the health thing, um, the savings situation. I think when I, we talk, when I think about money, I think that most brothers, if they end up blowing money on stuff, they end up blowing money on stuff that can, that has to do with concerning about women. Um, mm -hmm. So it, let, let, we have to we have to we have to break that open because I'm, I'm living in Poland. I'm not really into the white women. I, I had a show with a guy yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, uh, the Less Polish YouTube channel. But um, I did. You, know, he, you saw it? Yeah, I did see that. I was actually tuned in for that. Y'all were talking about, you know, how to say hi in, in Poland and, or <laughs> Polish rather. And uh, yeah, I was tuned in for that. Yeah. So uh, like me in, in the apartment that I'm living in, like I ain't got a, a you know, all the, the 2035 Ferrari like Roastmaster. He got his shit that don't even exist yet. But um. <laughs> You know, but like I don't have I have a modest place. Um, I don't have a car. I don't I don't spend a whole lot of money on certain things. But I know that for a lot of black men who come up in uh, urban areas, even as they get older, they have a need to, uh, you know, want to have like, uh, you know, a lot of expensive shoes, a lot of expensive clothes, um, you know, taking women to nice restaurants. Uh, all of these things, I think that black men. Uh, end up spending money on, you know, like uh, women asking for money, them giving it to them, stuff like that. So that kind of uh, affects black men's bottom line um, as they kind of waste money. What, 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 what do you have to say about that? Yeah, you know, whether it be women or whether it be just other things that black men are spending their money on a little bit loosely, it all affects everything. You know, um, sometimes a lot of times brother will say that what they don't have I, I very rarely think that a brother ain't got it you know what i'm saying right it, when it comes to when it comes to being able to support something like you got it you know it's just right. how you're using it you right. got it you spending two bucks a day on coffee that's 60 bucks a month you got it you spending five to ten bucks a day on lunch that's 150 to 300 dollars a month you right. know you go you, you got it but you blowing 50 bucks a week at the strip club so you can actually do it you know, when it comes to support and, and making and making sure that you can allocate funds to improve your life and making sure that you can also contribute to other black men uh, that, that are doing things that are, that are very well. But you just have to make the decision. And when it comes to, you know, dealing with women, of course, that's a whole thing that, you know, that, that would be like a topic in and of itself. Uh, but a lot of times I think that 
especially when brothers aren't in relationships, you know, they, they'll definitely just had a habit of tricking off some money on, on females a lot of times and very little, you know, ROI, very little return on investment a lot of times in the way of uh, just anything, just, just in dealing sometimes. It's like almost in, in a sense that sometimes brothers are so happy just to have a woman's companionship and company that, you know, they'll kind of put their own financial needs on a back burner before you know it, you didn't spend 40, 50, 60 dollars taking a girl out one, two, three times a month and, you know, all kind of for nothing in a way, just in the sense that th this may not even be a person who you necessarily going to start a relationship with or is even available emotionally to start a relationship with. But I think black men just have to be a lot more disciplined when it comes to our finances mm -hmm. and uh, just just having a, a lot more mindfulness about the way that we spend money. And that I think is going to be a really big key. And just having a habit, if you say if nothing else, if I know I'm going to put a certain percentage aside out of every check that I get, then even if I do, you know, kind of screw it up in other areas, at least I know I did enough uh, to make sure to make sure that I've, I've built up some sort of a nest egg for myself. Mm -hmm. OK, let me do this. Shout out to Brother Ray Knight. Uh, O'Shea, do you have any collard green salad this morning? Thank you, Brother Rain, for that super chat. Guys, do me a favor. Uh, and also the the blog that Brother Wayman Brown operates is www.theesquire.com. Definitely going to have this brother back. As you can see, he's an excellent uh, content creator. Like I said, man, you never know what guys are going to come on and kill it for you. You know, and I believe in black male talent, man, and helping the brothers out and, and, and introducing new minds to black YouTube. Um, and so shout, shout out to Brother Donnie Breeze. I think it's important to seek like minded brothers when you're ready to level up. Avoid conversing with negative, narrow-minded individuals. And we'll talk about that. Um, now, in the United States also, and I think this happens with a lot of our brothers uh, in the United K Kingdom, brothers that are in uh, from other places, Caribbean brothers, immigrant brothers coming to the United States, and their family is, let's say, back home, Haiti, Nigeria, Jamaica, wherever. You know, these brothers, they're coming in and they work very, very hard. And, um, you know, basically their family is uh, you know kind of in their pocketbooks you know their mama raised them you know their family they're trying to send you know remittances back home and things like that and it's not all it's, it's also very similar for african-american men uh and you're african-american also too right right so you understand how it is uh right right your last name is brown so i know you know uh <laughs> you know you know you know uh moms typically don't want to, if you're a single mom they don't want to let their sons, you know, typically, you know, get married with other women because their moms are dependent on their sons to provide financial support uh, for their lifestyles as they, as they get old and stuff like that. Uh, so a lot of black men end up, you know, not necessarily um, being able to build wealth because they're so busy taking care of, you know, other family members. If they end up with, a, you know, their own family, and stuff like that. So their money is kind of going away in different forms. And the same thing for the brothers who are from other parts of, of the world coming to the first world, whether it be, you know, United Kingdom or the United States. Let me ask you this. Did you have such an experience, you know, coming up as an African-American man where, you know, your family, as you started to kind of, you know, drift off to yourself, they were, you know, people were asking for money, stuff like that. Well, you know, interestingly uh, with me, O'Shea, is that, you know, aside from maybe, you know, you guys, you, like, I'm sure every black person, they got them cousins that they try to avoid because every time it's like, cuz, let me hold something. Let me hold five, ten dollars here and there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you always got those. But but in general, man, um, you know, that that type of, uh, you know, I see you out here doing your thing. So I'm sure you can you can help me out. I've been very fortunate not to uh, really have to deal with that. But on the, on the other hand, uh, when it comes to just my own sense of responsibility, like a lot of black men, especially when I was younger, uh, I think you even mentioned on a sh uh, on a uh, a show one time where, you know, when we first start thinking about ways we're going to make money or our uh, probability of making money, the first thing we're thinking about is taking care of our mom. You know, I'm about to go do this for my mom or I'm about to go do this for such and such. So uh, I, I've always had that type of even though with, with my parents, they were married uh, until I was like 13. But, you know, so I, I kind of it was like half the experience of, of mom and dad then you know, the last few years of my life, just uh, living with my mom uh, when I was young. But nonetheless, it's still kind of like that mentality that black men have, that personal responsibility that we have when it comes to taking care of family or or making sure that we can look out for other people. But um, I haven't had that experience. And I, and I already know, man, as I'm going to come up, 
I can already say it's probably not going to be something that I'm going to experience because, you know, it's going to be like this. Uh, I'm, I'm good at saying no. You know, I'm good at saying, <laughs> I'm good at saying, no, nah, you, you know, now nah, I ain't going to let nobody just be in dire straits, but I don't believe in, you know, trying to take care of adults because I think it's kind of, it's kind of sad, you know, when you're talking about grown 30, 40, 50 year old people mm-hmm. who are, are able bodied, but then they're always asking for help. Um, right. One of the things that really encouraged me when it comes to, uh, when it came to entrepreneurship is I remember in 2011, uh, my grandmother had passed away. And I remember it was it was kind of tough as a family. You know how it is when black people die. We trying to figure out, like, how are we going to cover this funeral? Exactly. And I remember uh, it was kind of tough for the family to come up with the burial expenses. And, you know, my family on, on that side is not necessarily uh, a large one. But you figure with all these adults, you would think that it would be nothing to be able to come up with that type of money in order to take care of somebody who was such a a strong figure within the family. And I remember uh, during that time, that was kind of almost like the last straw for me when it came to just settling for less, because I said, there's no way that I'm about to go through life and not be able to just put my hand on 10 grand when I need it, 20 grand when I need it, you know, to be able to take care of different things. So I'll always keep, you know, different income goals ahead of myself to make sure that I can uh, do different things and make different moves. But as far as family and, and people just asking for handouts and things like that, you know, hey, I'll see you at the reunion. And uh, I love you, but uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got I got to get up out of here, you know, and I, and I ain't really got no problem with that. man. I know some people is hard to say no to family, but I say no in a minute. Yeah. And a lot of black men don't say no. That's the thing. Like, you know, a lot of black men, they like to say, yeah, because it makes them feel, you know, pretty good to say, OK, I got you. I can do this. But, you know, even with me, I, I typically will say, yeah. But if it's, you know, another brother helping them out on these podcasts, I'm like that, I'll, I'll typically do it. Let me do this, guys. Thank you, brother uh, 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 David Pitts. Keep it up, O'Shea. Thank you so much for the pretty uh, for the uh, uh, super chat donation. Brothers, do me a favor and let us uh, like the video. Let's get 38 more brothers to go ahead and like the video uh, to get us to 100 uh, likes, brothers. We have 124 people watching right now. Um, let's Let's also talk about um, you know, the entrepreneurship piece. I know I'm kind of, you know, it's kind of skipping back and forth a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you're, 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 you're talking about the first blog that you did, uh, and mm-hmm. it was kind of not you know, necessarily maybe working out to, to your situation. Let's talk about that and how you're trying to rebound back now with the blog. But let's talk about initially, uh, with your blog and what, what direction was it initially going before you changed the direction? Well, initially uh, it was, uh, I think it was 2012 uh, when I just started and I had no technical experience. I didn't know anything about designing websites, anything like that. The only thing I knew was that I had a lot of good ideas that I wanted to put out into the world. So I just kind of started it off saying, I'm just going to start writing pieces. Uh, if you would have saw my blog back then, it was a really cool layout and design, but it was kind of like I was all over the place with stuff. You know, I had like some humor, then I would go into some real serious, deep stuff. And then I would, uh, you know, kind of have like some some in between type content. And I, I was basically my blog was kind of a reflection of my personality. Sometimes it's serious. Sometimes it's, it's very uh you know, funny and, and comedic. But I, all I knew was that I wanted to create a blog where people who have some sort of creative talent, where they can kind of get some assistance, assistance rather, and uh, some good advice. And uh, basically, you know, just kind of get some pointers on different things that they can do in order to kind of bring their their strengths to the forefront. But uh, now I've kind of shifted it to help black men uh, when it comes to just lifestyle challenges, when it comes to creating marketplace opportunities, when it comes to overall personal development and focusing on, you know, the emotional, the financial, the social and the mental development of black men to help us cope with our issues, uh, to be an encouragement to, to one another and for other brothers to also share their wisdom and their journey with, with trying to be a better version of themselves. So that's where I'm at with it now. Let me let me ask you this, because, you know, obviously I saw that the blog, you know, you started it. Um, what year did you start it? Uh, this was when I first put the Esquire project up. It was 2012. 2012. Okay. <clears throat> and so there was some inactivity for some time on the blog. Um, mm-hmm. There's probably at a moment where you're like, well, man, I'm going to just, you know, let me shut this blog down. Um, you know, I don't have time for it right now. Or things, um, you know, are doing certain, you know, it's not going the way I want to. What kept you for wanting to keep the blog going? 
and uh, to to uh, rebrand the blog and the content of it versus just, you know, giving up on it and quitting. Right. So um, probably the biggest encouragement to me was seeing how people were influenced by my blog. Uh, I'm a writer. So being able to see how people were influenced by my content was probably the biggest encouragement. And the second was just that sense of belief that eventually, you know, I would kind of find my way as far as the direction that I wanted to head with it. So uh, initially it was just kind of like, man, like you said, there was different periods of inactivity. I, I remember uh, I didn't really do anything for probably about seven or eight months on my blog. And then there was another time where I didn't do anything for probably three or four months. And I had to try to, you know, gather up content again because my my host, uh, Bluehost, they uh, they kind of, you know, they didn't have some of my content, which it wasn't their responsibility to keep. I didn't have stuff backed up. So it was kind of frustrating because I was trying to work, do a whole bunch of other stuff, then at the same time, create this blog. But really what kind of kept me in the game was just knowing that I had this skill and knowing that I had the ability to be able to influence people in a positive way. So then eventually... You know, I kind of looked at it as uh, an invention of a new ministry, if you will, when it came to narrow my focus towards trying to help brothers. And and now it's like, OK, I know I'm dedicated towards that niche. I know I'm dedicated towards that cause. I'm a black man. I need to be, you know, working with other black men who are like minded. Uh, and I know our strengths. I know our weaknesses. So it's easier for me to speak the language. And that was really kind of what kept me in there after these, these last few years. Shout out to Big Eastwood with the fifty dollars super chat. You know me and him gonna take over African country one day, man. We just waiting on they're gonna do a military coup with uh, with no violence. So shout out to my brother Eastwood, man. We got to get you on the Trucker Podcast on Thursdays. That's my brother. He's always in here all the time. Um, shout out to Josiah. Shout out to Roastmaster. Um, let, let's kind of talk about 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 the this uh, creating the content for African American men. And we do have brothers from you know the UK that that, that come in. Brothers who are uh, from other places. You know, when I was told that, uh, and you know, when I, I first started NegroManosphere.com, uh, uh, that blog, which is in, in, and because of you brothers, that blog has really opened up a lot of doors for a lot of other brothers. You know, uh, I want to thank everybody for your support on Negro Manosphere. It's, a, it's an excellent blog. It does very, very well because of you guys. I was told that if you create this uh, type of content for African-American men, uh, that they were not going to support uh, it's a waste of time trying to do things for African American men. Uh, they don't respond to this type of content. Uh, initially, let's say going back to 2012, if someone would have told you that you could have pre created a blog for African American men, what would you have thought at that time? You know, I probably would have thought that it was uh, possible to do, but you know, at that time, I was. I like the fact that I could write so diverse and uh, and I still can. So to me, it was I, I remember uh, one of my themes on my blog used to be individually distinctive, universally receptive, which which kind of meant, you know, it was for the individual. The, the content was for the individual who was very you know well rounded or uh, not necessarily worldly necessarily, but just someone who was very open minded, well rounded, well versed. And I remember I had wrote a short story uh, from the voice of a female. And um, that that actual short story, when I would share it, I, I don't have it on my blog right now just because I'm centering my attention for brothers. But I remember when I wrote that story, it was like a challenge for myself for me to be able to show like I'm a writer and I could write from the voice of a woman, you know, kind of like this love story, uh, so to speak. So back then, you know, I probably would have felt a little bit more uh, like it was a hindrance because I didn't want to be kind of boxed into a certain niche where that's all I can do. And that's probably how I would have looked at it back then. Like, I know I'm a black man, but look, I can do everything. I can write on any type of subject from different vantage points. But as far as thinking of, of the uh, possibility that it could be something that could, you know, benefit black men, um, because at that time I wasn't really familiar with too many blogs that were doing that. It would have been probably a, a nice challenge for me, but I don't think I necessarily at that time would have saw the vision you know, had it not been for brothers like yourself and, uh, you know, the different other YouTubers that are out right now who who decided that they were going to dedicate themselves to that cause. Let, let's talk about uh, after you've seen, because uh, even me, I was hesitant because, you know, Mike, I, I only speak to African-American male things. I can speak to other things on YouTube that's outside of the community, but typically I will kind of stay within that niche. Um what response have you seen from from the brothers, just even on YouTube, from the subscribers and people like that, 
that it shows that it is positive that this can actually uh, help our own people, our own our own group, the African American male community. Uh, has it been? I mean, what what not what what have you seen that's inspired you to be like, okay, I I know I can just concentrate in this niche. Right. So, um, you know, probably the the big encouragements thus far really definitely came from from uh, Ron Wills and Black Rand because when I I share my content with him, they uh read my articles and they're they're pretty lengthy. You know, for people who look on my website, I have some that are a little bit shorter, but I kind of write what I call signature pieces. For example, the detriment of uh dating single mothers for childless black men is one of my uh, pieces. And uh, I shared that one with Ram and I also had a video of his that's at the end of it. And the 10 commandments of not falling for women stand focused as a black man on the move. I, sh I shared that one with Ram. And just to get their feedback from guys like that, who I truly uh, admire and respect a lot, those, those two guys really encouraged me just as I'm rebranding things over the last couple of months to keep it going. And on my Facebook page, I also have a Facebook like page where pretty much on a daily basis, I uh, haven't actually uh, had a new post uh, within the past six or seven days, but I'm going to uh, pretty much I've been posting, you know, at least once a day to sometimes two times a day, some sort of piece of, of encouragement for brothers. And uh, whether I'm getting inboxes from different guys who are already within my network, you know, family, friends who are telling me, I like what you're doing. We need this. Uh, Things like that are really the encouragement. And I know I'm, I'm at a point where pretty much I just know that it's just about getting it out there to more people. Now, there's no question to me as to whether or not, you know, it's going to be of a, of a positive influence. It's just about, you know, using my Facebook marketing, things like that to, to push it more. And I'm just really looking forward to the next phase of being able to see brothers actually benefit from the material. So even when, you know, someone comments on on something, you know, on the page, on the Facebook page or whether they just give me a phone call to somebody I know who says like, yo, that was that was deep. I needed that. Those are all sources of encouragement that kind of keep me going. All right. And shout out to brother JSPK Fitness. We'll be doing a show with him. Uh, you know, uh, this brother is uh, I think definitely we talked about fitness. Uh, I have a show with him this week. Brothers, y'all know I'll be busy with, with, with bringing different brothers on here, so we'll be working with him. Um, also, let's talk about also the Facebook ads and stuff like that. And and uh, there's another brother I'm going to uh, be interviewing um, from Instagram, Afro Masculinity. He has an Instagram page that's just, you know, um, really, really focused on, uh, you know, on, on, on black men and, and, and things like that. So we're starting to see um, a lot more media I'm gonna be working with this week. Um, black Black Avenger TV, which is a, a kind of a YouTube for African American men that you can't get flagged or shut down. Um, I guess I mean this kind of black male revolution. Why do you think that black men are finally starting to wanting to tell their own story, uh, wanting to uh, put their information out there, wanting to kind of put their own blogs out in forums? Why do you think that brothers are now starting to do that? You know, I think uh, it's just time. Um, thankfully, with social media and, and the way that things are online, it gives everybody an opportunity to have a voice. And for so long, you know, black men, we, we've kind of been uh, restricted in a lot of ways when it comes to expressing ourselves. We're not really known as, as being, you know, very emotional or, uh, you know, being able to get things off our chest unless we're maybe in a state of anger about something a lot of times. But when it comes to just, you know, authentically putting it out there, being able to be vulnerable about certain things and letting ourselves be heard, we're not necessarily known for that. And um, I think brothers, they really need uh, an outlet to be able to do that. And it's just at a point where, you know, a lot of brothers are just sick and tired of being sick and tired of certain things. And then at the same time, they have uh, on the positive, a lot of good things that they want to put out there and that they want to share and try to see if there's other people that they can connect with. And, uh, you know, to the point that I made about being vulnerable, I know that on my own blog, um, there's an author bio that I have up there in which I kind of tell a little bit about my story. I started, I, I kind of bounce around within the bio, but I kind of start from age 24 when I was living, you know, in a, in this apartment and just kind of feeling kind of, you know, hopeless to a certain extent or not very valuable. And uh, I kind of backtrack and go into different things throughout my life that kind of led up to that feeling, not taking advantage of different opportunities that I could have when I was a little bit younger, things like that. Um, and then I kind of bring it up to speed to, you know, I know this has kind of been a part of my history, but where I stand now is, you know, staying on point and being the best man that I can be. So I think that right now, brothers are just at a point where they really want to uh, be better. You know, they want to do better. They want to know more they want to become more we kind of have something within us as black men where 
you know, we, we don't, we always have a need for a constant development, constant change uh, in the sense of making ourselves a better version of ourselves when we're really thinking along those lines. So I think it's just time, man, for, for brothers to do that. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot more blogs and YouTubers and people on the come up right now. Let me let me talk about also as far as um, the kind of the entrepreneurship space. Um, I know that, you know, you, you, you we are like a social media entrepreneurs. I think I am now. Um, that is, this is a space that we're starting to see more black men uh, kind of enter in with the social media ability with even the podcasting, not too many black male podcasters out there are black male um, dedicated shows. I mean, you do have black men who do shows, but they're not like targeted. Uh, now there was Josiah. He has black male talk. Um, you have obsidian. These are black male, like really strong pro black male kind of uh, target shows. But, um, but we're starting to see more brothers get into the social media market, the more the social media business, um, you know, the, 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 the content creation for brothers. Um, what do you think the, the, the outlook is or the market, um, uh, ability is for, as far as an economy, just on social media alone for, for African-American men to kind of, uh, benefit off of. You know, I think it's, it's pretty wide open. I don't really look at, uh, it is being oversaturated or anything like that, especially if you're going to make a dedication to being strictly for black men. You know, I know uh, on some different videos that I've, I've heard from you, you've made it very clear that you're about building up the black man. It's not necessarily just, you know, trying to help everybody out in the black populace or we'll just use the term community loosely. Uh, it is not really about that. And if you make a very strong decision to target your information to a certain niche and you're there and you're consistent and you're uh, you're able to show that you represent you know this group of people i think there's a lot of opportunity for that i think it, it can get to a point where you just start running into people uh who eventually will be able to say yeah i heard of O'Shea, or yeah i heard of this person or that person um actually somebody who i know who lives in buffalo it was funny because one day uh right before i actually probably sent you an email probably about a month and a half ago, we were just having a, a generalized conversation. We talk about a lot of, you know, topics among black men. I remember saying to this person, you know, it's a, it's a guy on YouTube, O'Shea. And before I could even say anything else, he was like, oh yeah, I listen to O'Shea. You know, then he started running off the list. I listen to Ram. I listen to this person. I listen to that person. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing, you know, kind of to me how uh, the social media space has allowed black men to be so marketable. And I think that sometimes a lot of brothers don't, may not realize how big they actually are. Uh, because it's more than just subscriber count. It's more than if you got 10, 20,000 subscribers, 50,000, 100,000 subscribers. It's like, you know, people who aren't even subscribed to you a lot of times, they can know who you are. Right. And um, it's, it's just, it's really huge. So, uh, you know, I think that social media just allows brothers to have a platform where they're going to be able to influence a lot more, a lot more other black men. And sky's the limit, really. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let me also... Um ask you as far as like you know politically because we always I always try to stress uh you know that black men have uh um a really big spending power uh 600 billion dollar spending power in the united states it's, it's even bigger than some eu countries mm -hmm. politically what do you think that black men should be trying to do to use that spending power to use that 20 million plus people to kind of push the initiatives to kind of get, you know, things in their favor. Cause you know, obviously, you know, black men are more likely to suffer from police brutality. It seems like, or at least in the top two, 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 two groups, you know, black men are more likely to go to jail, child support, those things like that uh, top two groups. So what do you think that black men politically should be trying to leverage both locally and at the, at the federal and state government level to push the things that should benefit them more as a group? Right. So that's a really interesting uh, talking point, because, you know, I know that especially like tuning into the panels and, and things like that, that you have on your show, there's a lot of different mixed views on this. And uh, I'm, I'm really a person who's kind of like a fundamentalist when it comes to like just just cover the things that are the most important that, you know, are pretty much going to affect most of black men, if not all. So like you mentioned with police brutality. I don't think there's I really don't think there's probably too many black men who haven't been pulled over multiple times, you know, uh, just for no reason and have to deal with some sort of encounter with the police. We know that when we do, we probably thinking this might be the last time I ever drive a car. 
you know, this might be the last time I'm ever out and about because you know that any sort of encounter that you can have with an officer as a black man can lead to your detriment. And that could be the end of it right there. So I think just focusing on things that basically uh, touch on the major aspects of black men's lives. Um, I don't uh, I won't necessarily right now get into the child support portion of it because I know that's a, a thing that comes up a lot. And I think that for me, before you know, thinking I'm really qualified to to touch on that. And I should do much more research and, and evaluate things a little bit uh, to be able to, to take it there. But when it comes to things like police brutality, uh, when it comes to things like being able to have certain type of uh, employment opportunities uh, for black men, things along those lines that pretty much we know that all brothers for the most part have to suffer from or most of us suffer from in some shape or form. Uh, I think those are the things that we really need to be focused on. And they have to be initiatives that resonate with black men at large you know when we start trying to get into too many different aspects and trying to cover too many different things it kind of takes the momentum away from maybe those one two or three major things that we really really need to focus on mm -hmm. but there are certain things that are just by default when you just say this topic or this issue like police brutality nearly every black man is going to be on the same page uh so when we focus on those types of things and uh really under i think is also understand it's important rather for us to understand the way that politics works. Uh, I know that you've referenced Dr. Claude Anderson's poweronomics uh, a couple of times throughout your vlogs. And that to me has been one of the most uh, just influential books with understanding politics a lot more, how things work. So I would encourage everybody to go out there and, and make sure they grab that for sure. Like, especially if you're a black man, you can use those principles for, for any sort of economic development and also uh, for any sort of political initiative and interest. But yeah, you know, just focusing on a couple of things that black men are largely influenced by and being able to be on the same page and also realizing that every black person is not going to necessarily, you know, work in accordance with that. But you don't need everybody. You just kind of need enough to mm -hmm. be able to make that push. Just like, uh, you know, I know there's a comparison with the, the uh, LGBTQ community a lot and how they got things done. Um, I'm, I'm sure that every person who may fall within that that uh, category didn't necessarily have something to do with the political initiatives, but they still benefited from it. Mm -hmm. So it's really just about having enough like minded brothers who can all come be on the same page to make things happen that other people can end up benefiting from. Because when it's all said, said and done, you know, pretty much, you know, the person that has the, the resources is the person that really ultimately makes the decisions. And um, I, I do think it's really important, though, to make sure that you have just enough brothers instead of trying to include every single person involved in an initiative because then everything just kind of becomes scattered let me kind of talk to you about a little bit and i know we're uh going over an hour guys 141 people uh in, in the chat get the likes up uh 12 more people to get to 100 i appreciate everybody watching today um let me talk to you about you know again uh i've been having some panels uh as of late that have been including some people that look at things different than I do as far as um, what black men should be doing, uh, maybe the black community at large. Uh, and I've been trying to bet, you know, combine these people with different, sometimes opposing views to try to understand the views and get brothers talking. Now we know all brothers don't think alike, uh, but one of the things that I can say that, 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 that black men are suffering from is when we are, uh, we might agree on a lot of things, but one of the things that we can't agree on, uh, it, it becomes a lot of emotionalism. It can become a, call, a lot of name calling. It could get real ugly real quick, uh, and then we can kind of, you know, that 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 relationship can be severed just based off of that one disagreement. Uh, what are your thoughts about about black men and and trying to open up open up their minds to other people's ideas in the same community to push a greater agenda? That's that's so important because um you know black men we have to learn how to be more diplomatic when it comes to dealing with each other. You know we all have different uh, upbringings, we all have different values, we all have different agendas and different intentions. But really, I think. It's important for brothers to be diplomatic, to be able to see things from other sides, not to be stuck on any one way of thinking about something uh, that may not necessarily be in conflict with their own morals or standards or principles. But we're talking about just biases and preferences. I think it's important for brothers to really be open minded and, and having uh, more more dialogue about things that can be looked at from a different angle. And the respect factor is, is really a big deal because 
you know, I'll definitely hear in different sections of YouTube when I hear brothers kind of going at each other, I think publicly, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with disagreeing or even some forms of argumentation as long as there's some logic behind it. But I think that publicly, you know, kind of the, the disrespect sometimes that can be shown towards other black men, it just makes things it pretty much puts some brothers in a situation where they'll grow to resent you and they'll always they'll already establish in their mind that they pretty much won't be working with you on anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I think black men have to respect each other's differences. But one of the things that I really appreciate about the new direction that I'm heading, especially with my blog, is that since I'm thinking black man first, I'm not thinking everybody black first. I'm thinking black man first. Uh, it, it kind of puts a constraint on certain things that I'll you know, have opposition towards that might be different popular things that are, you know, within the Negro manosphere. So for an example, you know, when it comes to dating, who you date outside the race and things like that, that's always like a really, really big topic that comes up a lot of times. And I think that because we don't really have a centralized location that we're trying to get to as a black community, because we don't necessarily have like you know, a point that we're necessarily all trying to get to or or something that everybody can can agree on. It's kind of hard to say, even on a topic like that, what a brother should do, because if you have some who believe in the strength in numbers and some who believe in just, you know, making sure that we can constantly keep on, uh, you know, reproducing ourselves, then that's one thing. Then you have others who think, you know, well, a lot of us don't even need to be reproducing and we need to get rid of a lot of us, so to speak. So, you know, kind of dealing with women who are outside the race is actually a good thing or uh, is, is an acceptable thing. Then you have everything in between. But really, I think it's important for brothers to use a guiding force of whatever I'm saying. Is it bringing unity to me and this other black man? Is it bringing some sort of unity? Is it bringing harmony or is it causing division? If it's causing division, then it's probably not something I need to be putting that much into. I need to try to find the common ground and stick to the common ground things and work with that. No, that that's excellent. That's excellent. That's definitely what we should be doing, brothers and um, guys. Thank you so much. Um, got a hundred forty, but four more likes to get us to a hundred, brothers. Again, YouTube will be promoting this video. The more likes that we get, and that's the reason why we ask for that. Um, also, I want to say this uh, for those people that want to visit the website uh, www.theesquire.com. Uh, I it is now in the description. And for those brothers who want to, uh, you know, basically drop your emails, I have free ebooks from the Negro Manosphere, How to Stop Simping uh, in 24 Hours. We have that also. I got to get back to promoting uh, the, the email list. We have over 5,000 brothers uh, that's on the email list. And so I definitely thank you. Um, it, let me ask you, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I wanted to kind of weigh in on the day or... Uh, you know, overall, man, I just wanted to to definitely express my appreciation uh, to you for having me on. Um, I think what you're doing, O'Shea, is it's incredible, man. Uh, I know a lot of times I hear you on different videos and, and sometimes you're like, man, listen, I ain't about to be doing this too much longer. I'm about on my last leg with y'all brothers. But I'm like, man, I really do hope that you keep going, you know, where wherever you see fit, whatever role that you see yourself having in our development as black men and our moving forward as a group. I really do hope, uh, you know, that you can do something that's comfortable for you and that works. And you put in so much that uh, it needs it needs to definitely be recognized and, and rewarded, man. So. You know, whatever I just want to say publicly, like whatever you got going, I'm, I'm with you, man. Uh, if you I know you were trying to talk about uh, organizing something for next year for Brothers at Convention. Um, I, I would love to see something like that happen and, and love to play a role in that and do whatever I can to make that that uh, that uh, come, man. So I definitely appreciate everything that you do. And I just want to encourage all the brothers out there to basically whatever you got going on in your life, whether it be struggles relationship wise, money struggles. You know, I've been there. Uh, sometimes you might kind of feel like you're at the bottom uh, of, of the road, you know, or at the end of the road when it comes to a lot of things. But just kind of keep your head high. Try to figure out whatever you can do to, to make life better. You know, uh, reach out wherever you can. If you find somebody who has a bigger problem than yours, a lot of times that could be a good way to, to kind of take care of your own problems because you'll be able to focus attention on somebody who needs it more. So really, uh, I just want to encourage the brothers out there to keep on trying their best, to keep on uh, working to their strengths. And uh, just to keep on going, man. And I definitely appreciate you for having me on. No problem, brother. I can I can guarantee you, you'll definitely be back. I want to shout out to uh, all the moderators. Uh, moderator awards are still going, guys. Ten more days left. Eleven more days left. Uh, I'm gonna put a vlog up about it before, so we're gonna you know go hard to end of the month. Um, I do have two more shows today. 
<clears throat> one with Mike Nificent. Uh, that's going to be very interesting, I'm pretty sure. And then we have the Sunday Rumble show on the other channel. We'll have Information Man show as our, our main keynote guy tonight. So you know the Sunday Rumble shows get real ugly. They get real interesting. You guys love those shows. So, uh, again, I want to thank the brother Wayman Brown for even reaching out to me. Uh, and I have to really give a, a big response to the subscribers because it's you guys that give, you know, hope for other brothers who can create content for our group because of the support that you guys give. It's not necessarily just, you know, the super chats or nothing like that or just the people that are, you know, you have a thousand people watching or whatever. It's that you brothers have responded so great to the content that it encourages brothers to even change their platforms and certain means to speak to our needs and conditions. Like this brother had a, a, a blog that uh, wasn't even catered toward us, but because of, you know, the market that we're able to, 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 to produce, we can, we can bring brothers who are talented and that want to produce content for our group. And that's, that's, that's what we need. We need more people that want to come in and produce content. I have dudes that are traveling. I want to produce content for us. Now we have guys that want to start their own forms. And this is, this is where we need to be. So you brothers have really uh, faithfully, you know, commented on the videos. You've shared them. Uh, you've told other people about what we're doing uh, all throughout the manosphere, not even just my channel, but other brothers. So you guys are really in encouraging other brothers to want to come in uh and, and and help us you know brothers from even outside of the community outside of the manosphere community brothers like george lucas who's not necessarily not george lucas but george uh uh macon uh brothers like that who want to come in and 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 weigh in on the shows and that's just because we've really showed over here that uh in this sector youtube and abroad that you know financially uh you know we are stable our people support uh, and things like that. Yeah, George Lucas. How do I go about starting my own blog? Well, I'll let Sweet James, I'll let uh, Wayman answer that. Wayman, um, how would you give him some information about starting his own blog? Yeah, so interestingly enough, man, um, speaking of ebooks, I actually have a free ebook that I'm going to be putting out uh, very soon. Um, you know, look for it probably within the next two to three weeks, uh, just kind of doing some editing. But the, the actual ebook um, that I have is basically going to show brothers step by step on how to actually start their own website it, it's going to touch on some personal development you know like we we touched on here but it's going to basically tie into uh also being able to create an online platform so i got a step by step step from you know securing a domain name to getting a web host to what type of content management system that you can use and it's, it's laid out so simply um that basically i say if you can post to twitter uh then then you can basically start your own website. So what I would do is uh, I would just tell brothers to be on the look, just make sure you like the Facebook page. I'll make sure I, I got the link for O'Shea. And mm -hmm. what I'll do is just so that everybody can have that content when the ebook drops, uh, I'll make sure that everybody is on my uh, my subscriber list so that everybody can get a copy of it. But it'll basically be very detailed on how to do that. And it's something I'm putting out there for free. You know, I, I wanna help people save a lot of costly mistakes that I made at the beginning when I was trying to get stuff done, spending thousands of dollars in mistakes. Yeah. And basically, you know, I pretty much show you how for under $200, you can get your own thing going and create a, a platform for yourself. But uh, there are some steps uh, to the brother who asked that question, but I'll make sure that everybody has access to that information. Just uh, like the page and don't, don't be afraid to email at all. And I'll make sure that when the ebook drops in the next two, three weeks that you have it. Yes. And then uh, I just want to add to that. Um, <clears throat> and I have to take away from what he said, but in addition you know, when you start a blog, obviously, what is your niche? Who are you talking to? Uh, and I think another thing is, because um, I think, you know, the domain, all that stuff is good. But how often can you, you know, who's writing on the blog and how often can you can you produce? Ne Negro Manosphere is a, 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 a huge blog that has multiple content producers, I mean, at least for myself, is opera, you have individual blogs and then you have blogs that are more like magazines, like mine. Um, the Negro Manosphere is a conglomerate, like almost in that, in that respect. So uh, for example, Monday is Alan Roger Curry's day, Tuesday is Tony Maceo, Wednesday is Donovan Sharp, Thursday is Ron Wills. Did you know Ron writes on the Negro Manosphere, Wayman? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I always look at Ron's stuff on there. 
Yeah, Rom writes on when uh, uh I, sometimes I guess posts. Y'all know when I when I when I put up a post, and it go it go crazy. I need to start. I need to put put this next one up because it, it you know when I be you know I be writing sometime right with me. Oh yeah, man. I always be checking you out. You know, I check out the the Doctor Action comic book, everything, man. <laughs> you know, I be I be I be throwing them out there. I mean, I ain't good as they even, but you know, I gotta brag about my. I get like three or four comments more than Alan Roger Curry. He gonna hear from me. I'm <laughs> yeah, I like I like the one you had to fight different types of baby daddies, man. Oh, and, yeah. and I like the blog you did on that. Yeah. <laughs> so so guys, you know, thank you, Southern boy. Um, like your your blogs are really good, I man. You're an excellent writer. I, re I read and it's very detailed. Uh, so if you know if you're writing detailed blogs like Wayman, I mean I don't know if you could if somebody could put out a real detailed blog like every day. It's a lot of work because it's really intricate. He's a really really good uh, writer. So I would say you know how often can you can you produce the content? And also for us because when you brothers, let me tell you guys when you guys when I get the money from Patreon, okay, uh, the first thing that I'm doing are my YouTube whatever money. The first thing that I do is I buy content in advance. So let's say, for example, Alan Roger Curry says, I can't be here on this Monday or that Monday. I have content that I paid for in advance where I can just go into um, my draft and just, you know, schedule a, a blog like that. I, I don't do I do a lot of evergreen content, so I don't deal with a lot of like trending news, stuff like that. So I always like to have me personally 30 to 40 to 50 articles complete on draft before. That's that's what the content coming day. And I also have a lot more content. So I have a tons of content. Like right now, I have like 27 articles right now in draft status. So if I didn't have any articles for 27 days, I at least have 27 days where I can get more content. So like I said, when I get Patreon money, um, when I get the YouTube money, our brothers PayPal me stuff like that. First thing I'm doing is I'm con I'm contacting my guys, and we're putting out more content. And so, if you're an individual blogger, that's something that before you might want to go live, you might want to think about how much content do you have. You know, do you want to space it out? Do you have enough content to like maybe last you eight or nine weeks if you're posting daily? Uh, because that's what I'm always worried about. I'm always worried about how much content do I have. And some guys, it's like Donovan, um, Alan Roger Curry and Rhyme, they write whatever the hell they want to write. Uh, but guys like Donovan, they'll give me an option choice. Uh, my, my boy out in the, my boy out in Serbia, right? He just put out an article today. He'll give me uh, certain aspects. And that is uh, Alexa, Alex V. He's a Serbian guy, man, but he's actually uh, been writing for the brothers in, in, in the tone. You think he black. So, you know, we like to keep the Negro Manosphere blog likes to keep content uh, ahead of time. We 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 want to be ready for a day where we don't have content because the brothers are expecting the content. That's why they support us on Patreon. Uh, the brothers expect the content. That's why they super chat. Uh, even on my YouTube channel, when we do shows, the shows are in advance. You know, we, we so we know what we're doing. So uh, Dwayne Newberry, we may have to purge. So I just want to add that in there, and I'm pretty sure that Wayne's going to have that. So we want to have that also, and you want to make sure that you can keep the blog. My goal was for Negro Manosphere, how much I can have enough content so I can make it a year. That was that's excellent. Fun. What'd you say? No, I was just saying that's excellent. Uh, even with my, uh, you know, my Facebook post on my page, I had a lot of stuff that was just scheduled ahead of time. Like even. Uh, you know, when I work on it between the day and tomorrow, I'm going to make sure that I have posts that are going to be coming up for a while where I can just automatically have them drop so that I don't have to be right there, you know, every single day doing it. I just, I can just schedule them every day, four o'clock, you know, Eastern time, for example, they'll be coming out. So being organized in your approach and having all that set up and knowing how frequently you're going to post are all very much so key things, you know, like with me as an individual blogger, when I write is is kind of like I always I always kind of think, you know, I'm like dropping a shot eight album or something like that. Like, you know, you might have to wait a little bit, but once you get it, it's gonna be so comprehensive on the topic that I'm going in on. And it's gonna be something that you can use as a reference piece because a lot of things I I try to write things from almost a timeless perspective as well. And uh you know, uh, so so I think that's really important. You got to decide: Am I going to be writing daily? Am I going to be writing, you know, once a week, once a uh, once a month, twice a month? But making sure that you can have an organized approach when you do so. Right, right, and that and that and that is and that is huge, brother. So you know, if you guys want to get into this, and you know, remember, um, this is not this this business content creation 
you know, it, I'm lucky enough to have some of the better guys in the world that produce content from black male media, whether it's Sylvanus in Nigeria, whether it's Burabari in Nigeria, whether it's, you know, Alan Roger Curry, Rom Donovan, you know, I have all the guys for the most part, you know, Marcus Love. Uh, so I have a little bit more leeway than like somebody, somebody, a new guy starting up. But if you're starting out by yourself, uh, just know, you know what I mean? Make sure you have enough content to last you for a year. Give it yourself a year. You know what I mean? Don't, don't look for, you know, anything great to happen within the first year. Is using Facebook a good way to start? Uh, I'll let you ask, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let Wayman answer that. What do you think, Wayman? To, uh, what, what are they asking? Is it a good way to start? What's that? Well, it's Facebook. I mean, um, I'll say this. I'm a really big believer in Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. Right. Best at it. But I mean, what do, you, what do you think about Facebook ads? I think Facebook ads are excellent for promoting. Um, there's actually a course if you if uh, you want to get some information for anybody that's out there. U-D-E-M-Y, Udemy.com is a great resource to being able to uh, study different things, you know, especially when it comes to online marketing. I remember uh, during I want to say it was around March. Uh, of this year, March or April, I bought this Facebook marketing course. And it's so detailed that basically the information that's in it can qualify you to take the Facebook marketing certification. There's a couple of different Facebook marketing certifications. Uh, I think they might be around a hundred some dollars, but it, I mean, it shows you how to target your market in a very detailed way. A lot of different tips and things like that, that you won't necessarily always find like on free YouTube videos that are out there. It's, it's so worth it to spend the 10, 15, 20 bucks, even, you know, 50 bucks or whatever, because it just opens up so many more opportunities. But yeah, Facebook ads are tremendous. I ran them. I'll be running them when I drop my ebook, as well as to promote my articles. I have a campaign that's already set up. Uh, it's just, uh, the launch just hasn't taken place yet, but I've been already putting things together, you know, as far as promoting my articles. So I think Facebook ads are very effective, cost effective way and efficient way to put your information out there. And it's really where I'm going to end up doing the majority of my, of my online marketing. Yeah, I, 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 I was, I definitely need to get better on my uh, Facebook ads. I'm in for blogging It's getting your ideas. Yeah. It's getting your ideas there. Um, again, cause Facebook, if you have a fan page, it will let you target who you're trying to reach. Now, Facebook will not let you target by race. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing that, you know, that, that is a problem. But definitely Facebook is, is good. Um, you know, try to find people in different circles because the smaller your niche is, the more work you'll have to do, obviously. But, um, yeah, I mean, the blogs are blogs are a great thing, man. The wars are always won and lost on paper, brothers. Always remember that. Um, Brother Wayman, is there anything else that we need to discuss or? Uh, you know, uh, just uh, again, want to encourage everybody to keep their head up, do their thing. Um, I'm glad everybody was able to, to stay up with us early. I know I caught an early stream around. Uh, you had the brother who was on here a few days ago talking about photography. And I was actually on my way to work. It must have been around like 630 and I jumped on that. So I appreciate you for, man, just being around the clock and uh, making sure that you give people like myself an opportunity to come on and, and talk. Um, if there's anything I might just kind of close with, though, is uh, I, I want to encourage brothers to to really the, the whole theme of this show was, you know, designing the unstoppable black man. And again, we, we've already talked on some things that are basic, fundamental things that we can do moving forward. But I just want brothers to really be able to see themselves as people who are deserving of something better and just figure out different areas of life that they can improve themselves, that they can upgrade. Uh, even when it comes to things like volunteerism, uh, I'm a volunteer, a literacy volunteer locally where I teach people or, or show people rather some skills for reading and writing. Some of these people come from other countries, uh, but just having like a well-rounded lifestyle for a black man, I think is really important, making sure that socially you're trying to uh, improve and be in the circles that you need to be in, taking care of your mental health, your physical health. You don't have to do a whole lot. You can kind of be you can kind of be like that quarterback that got drafted at the end of the third round who may not have the strongest arm, but they have a good command of offense. They, they can you know, be an accurate passer. Just kind of work to your strengths. And you can find the, the small wins there. But I just want to encourage everybody to just keep on doing what they got to do and uh, uh, really just keep persevering and definitely appreciate platforms like this that can help us to achieve our goals. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for coming on, man. You really did a really wonderful job on the show, brother. Uh, I'm glad I was there. You definitely be back. And guys, thank you for you know your support. We have two more shows today. Uh, so stay up with us. Uh, another show will be on this channel and then another show will be on the main channel, the Sunday Rumble. You guys know y'all love that show. 
again thank you brothers uh thank you for the support uh and everything like that and we'll see you guys next time peace out peace out everybody